Welcome to Firearms Friday, coming to you from the Wyoming State Museum here in Cheyenne. My name is Evan Green. I am the firearms historian for the museum. And over the last three or four years, I've been going through the firearms in the permanent collection and uh, updating the inventory, uh, chasing some stories about these guns, and have been making these uh, videos which I hope you enjoy watching as much as I enjoy making them. So what do we have here? We have a couple of rifles um, that came to us from the Kerr family. Ruby and Leonard Kerr in Cheyenne had the L.L. Kerr, K-E-R-R, -R, construction company. They built the Chapel of the Chimes, which is the funeral parlor here in Cheyenne. They did some uh, Cheyenne Plaza. Where they had that project or part of that project uh, and other commercial and uh, residential buildings here in Cheyenne were built by them. And these were their rifles. These were their hunting rifles. We have your pretty much standard 1894 Winchester carbine. And this one's kind of cool. It's, uh, it shows a lot of wear, as does the Winchester. But uh, I misidentified this right out of the box. I said, oh, this is, your, this is your standard model 1899 Savage lever action rifle. Even put that in my report, even though I also mentioned in the report that the serial number indicates that it was made in uh, 1895. So, oops. Uh, made that mistake. So this was the predecessor of the 1899 uh, Savage lever action and had some interesting features, some of which carried over into the uh, Model 99. Up until 1895, lever action rifles had a tubular magazine, as does this Winchester and other Winchester uh, lever actions that you've seen on previous videos. So that means that you really can't use a pointed bullet in a tubular magazine. Why? Well, because the point of that bullet rests on the primer of the cartridge ahead of it in the magazine. So you're really limited to a flat pointed bullet, which is not as ballistically efficient as a spire point bullet with a, with a tapered, tapered to a sharp point. And I was witness to an unfortunate incident where cartridges in a tubular magazine detonated. And it was not, it was not pretty. The guy holding the rifle was not badly injured, but it really messed up his gun. This happened to be a replica of an 1860 Henry rifle. And to load a Henry rifle, you move uh, the magazine follower up and you put the cartridges in like you would load a modern day 22, and then you let that follower down on top of the cartridges in the magazine. And while he claims he did not, it would appear that he turned that follower loose, and the impact of the follower was sufficient to detonate three cartridges in that magazine tube. And uh, fortunately, the Henry has that slot where you manipulate that follower so there was a place for some of that energy to go as opposed to just blowing that magazine tube apart. Anyway, tubular magazines, you cannot use a pointed bullet. This one, the Savage, has a rotary magazine. It holds five rounds, and uh, it's a rotary magazine. So they're not stacked up against each other. And it even has this clever little window in the frame that's the counter. It keeps track of how many cartridges you have remaining in that rotary magazine. Pretty clever technology for 1895. It also has a little window here in the top of the bolt. Well, that's convenient. What the hell is that for? Well, when the magazine, when the rifle is cocked, it will. You can look down in that there and see it. It says it's C, 
C for cocked. So you know that you know the, the hammer, the internal hammer, is cocked. When you discharge the rifle, uh, it shows an S for safe, meaning that the rifle is not cocked. So that's pretty clever for again 1895 technology. The other thing that's that's unique and perhaps uh, innovative is that the Savage rifles eject to the side. So when you work the action, the cartridge is ejected to the side. Why is that important? Well, with the, with the Winchesters, all of them, up until the 1895 Winchester, it was a top eject, okay? So, well, even the 95 was a top eject. It did not have a tubular magazine. So that means you cannot mount a scope sight, a telescopic sight, on your classic lever action Winchesters. You can mount a telescopic sight on a Savage because the cartridge comes out the side instead of out the top. So again, this, this 1895 was made in 1895. It was the first year of production for uh, this particular model of rifle. And it has octagon barrel, 26 inch octagon barrel, and it has been fitted with a receiver peep sight. And the original sight that was rear sight that was mounted on the barrel has been removed, and uh, that dovetail filled with a blank. So for a lot of people, that uh, peep sight is uh, better for accuracy and target acquisition because your eye tends to center the front sight in that circle that you're looking through on a peep sight. And you'll notice the other rifle has one too, has a little bit different style, but it also has an aftermarket peep sight uh, mounted on the receiver. So these folks, uh, Ruby and Leonard liked their peep sights. This one's a little strange because they did not remove the original rear sight. And if you look through there, it's, it's real busy because you not only get your sight picture from the, from the peep sight, but you can see this uh, modified buckhorn sight in conjunction with the front sight on the rifle. So. Uh, I would, I would have not done it this way, but it obviously worked for him because there's a picture in the file of a moose that Leonard killed when he was 82 years old with this rifle up in Jackson Hole. So it worked for him. Worked for him. I find, I find these interesting because they've been, they've been used hard. And I went, geez, do you think you could have put a little wax on the stock sometime, you know? Uh, so this, this rifle and this one have been in and out of vehicles, maybe on and off of horses, uh, and show that wear. They were tools used to uh, acquire game animals for the freezer or the table. So I, I like that. I, I've come to appreciate firearms that, that were used that, that uh, demonstrate their function as tools. And these certainly do that. Again, uh, donated by Leonard and Ruby, and I've lost the <coughs> name, uh, the Kerrs. Leonard and Ruby Kerr, who had L.L. Kerr construction in Cheyenne. The, uh, the donation was facilitated by their daughter, who said that her mom used this rifle for deer and antelope in southeastern Wyoming, elk, she hunted elk with it. It's a caliber 303 Savage, uh, and this, the 1895 model was only made in 303 Savage. It is not the same cartridge as the 303 British, which was their uh, primary cartridge for their uh, small arms in both World War I and World War II, the 303 British. <clears throat> Ballistically, this is very similar to the 3030. I think it's a really handsome rifle. The octagon barrel has this nice taper to it. Uh, and again, you can, you can look at this and at the, at, the, at the bottom of the receiver and the sides of the receiver is worn down to the bare metal. So somebody carried this at that balance point 
uh, spent a lot of time in the field with this rifle. So used hard, uh, bordering on abuse maybe, but that's just my value judgment. But again, quite a handsome rifle. This one is uh, 32 Winchester Centerfire or 32 Special. So again, ballistically similar to the classic 3030, but a, uh, a little bit bigger diameter bullet. <clears throat> Sometimes uh, you bought what was available at the hardware store. The 3030 certainly would, over the years, be easier to find ammunition for than 32 Special, but uh, very similar in their capabilities. So there's the Kerr family rifles. If you have questions or comments about this video or any of our others, or if you want to chat about firearms uh, in our collection or yours, give us a call at the museum. We're always glad to try and accommodate that. So once again, thanks very much for watching.